Hi, this is Isaac from Epica and uh, you're at Rome by Wow. Of course, thank you to be with us today. You're and um, I know you're on tour because you're promoting the Quantum Enigma, uh, your last work and of course success. How would you describe this album and um, what, uh, what's new compared to the previous ones? All the songs are new. <laughs> so uh, yeah, well, um, we kind of changed the whole process of writing the album uh, and recording, so the whole team was different. Um, we didn't go to the Gate studio as last time, or like all the other albums are done by Sacha Pitt. This time he only participated in uh, some of the vocal lines, writing vocal lines. Um, but we went to a different studio, different producer, different mixer, um, and also like within the band we we wrote uh, songs still individually, but then we put them to the table and actually recorded all the ideas in the rehearsal room. Then we went to the studio to record the rehearsals there. And then after that we, we um, did the actual recording. So it was a lot of trying uh, before actually entering the studio, whereas in the past we would just send files to each other and like do something in our home studios and then it would be alright and then we go in the studio so this time we put more effort in all the details and I think you can hear it and also the production is a little more heavy so I think we uh, yeah we're really happy with this album because retrospect the live DVD was kind of a kind of looking back to the past last decade and I think that was time now to move on and have a different chapter in Epica. So that's what we tried to do with the new album. And it seems like people really like it. So I guess we have done something right. <laughs> How has your approach to music and uh, to tours changed all over these years? Uh, my approach to music. I don't know, if I like it then it's good and uh, I don't know, it's difficult to say. I like good productions, so I like something if it sounds really good, um, then I will like it more than like, for instance, some black metal would sound really shitty, but that's supposed to be like that, but then I don't really like it. Um, also if I write, it has to be groovy, challenging for guitar, it has to be a nice melody and uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's difficult to say because there's a lot of stuff which has to fall into place. But uh, And I think also getting older, um, it also uh, changes a little bit. But it's always, uh, you know, sometimes you can have something brilliant and then the next day you wake up, you listen to it again and you think it's total shit. So it's always different. How do you deal with it when it happens? Oh, I just throw it away and start all over again. You know, there's nothing else you can do. Because uh, it's not wise to uh, go with something you don't really like for a longer time. And you just need to. And it's just not meant to be and you have to find something else, I guess. Yeah. So lots of stuff in the garbage. <laughs> That's the right way, I think. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> You always put uh, great attention to lyrics and themes in your songs uh, and uh, you come from religion and politics and uh, social issues uh, and so on and with Design Your Universe you got an even enhanced uh, point of view because you were moving from philosophy and uh, science and quantum theory and you are falling through um, uh, these, uh, these issues with the quantum enigma. Mm -hmm. um, you, it seems like you want to analyze the, per the perception of reality. How did you go to this high level? Uh, well, the thing is that it's very in intriguing if you look at the quantum principle, how it works. Uh, it's very intriguing and it's, uh, apparent, or it's mostly Mark who is uh, reading a lot about it and um, and, uh, but, but if you look at the enigma itself, so you can, 
maybe look up on YouTube dual slit experiment. It's mo one of the most uh, experimented things ever in uh, science because it's so difficult to capture and it's basically uh, if you look at the experiment in the end you'll see that uh, if you look at something then you determine what it is if you look away then it can be anything and that's very um, strange because we're not used to that where we think that what we see is real and uh, what we grab is real and that we really have it but um, if I'm looking there I don't see what's happening there you know so anything can change and if I look at it then it's the reality if you go even further you could say that everything we see or feel because I see my hands but, but are they my hands I don't know you know I can't see what you are seeing so um, and that's strange if you start thinking about that and if you think that anything can be anywhere, all matter can be anywhere and that everything is connected and then uh, it's really strange to look at certain things which you also or which you always took for granted and, um, and it puts a different perspective to how you see it. However, in the end it's still your life and you still go to bed and wake up and what not so it doesn't really change but it makes you think that maybe there's more to it so. do you think that music can answer any questions about it uh, I don't think so um, I don't know but I don't think so you just make the music and maybe that's the same thing uh, where does the music come from is it my own inspiration or does it come from others or is it maybe someone else going into my brain and I don't know so that's so you could think really weird stuff but in the end I think I just make music and maybe yeah I don't think it has to do with the whole quantum enigma or quantum physics stuff last year you celebrated 10 years of Korea for the Epica and yeah. recorded your first DVD which you mentioned before which is a retrospect um, at Eidhoven. Uh, looking back at the past, is there anything you um, you felt like very difficult to get through and uh, which was instead the highlights of your career? Uh, well it's still sometimes uh, difficult right now because you had like the whole crisis and for some reason you, there's more and more bands and there's more competition for you know now it used to be a hobby and now it's my job so we need to stay on top of the game and we need to make sure that we can pay our bills so we have to do our best or even better than the last time because people are always first in line to criticize and to put on Facebook how shitty you are and so we have to try to do our best and um, so that's kind of a constant struggle also playing an instrument is really hard if you want to get better or something you have to practice a lot, new songs uh, try to come up with new things so it's all fun but it's at the same time also very challenging and it can be, uh, can be either the high or the low you know someday you pick up your guitar and there's like nothing there, you can't come up with new ideas or then the other day you wake up and you have plenty of ideas um, so that could be like the downside um, something else could be social life you're on tour a lot so that means that friends and family at home you leave them behind and uh, if someone gets married or gets kids or birthdays or whatnot you miss out on all that so that's sometimes hard to see or on my own birthday I'm not home or it doesn't matter to me but for some people it does and um, and the highs are like constantly there you know yesterday we played Milan it was sold out it was really great great energy uh, then today last time as I said here it was really great so I kinda expect the same or even better 
Uh, we have a couple more sold out shows to go. We have we play at the end of the year, first time in India. Next time we play first time in South uh, South Africa. Stuff like that. It's constant highs, you know. Um, and it can be as simple as that: playing in a new country, meet new people, new cultures, and that's for me already a high. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess that's that's about it. You know, it's just fun to. Uh, be part of this and to uh, meet people all over the world and play for people. Yeah. Since the band came out when the internet was yet grown yeah. and uh, there has been all these changes you were talking about in the music business, mm -hmm. um, what do you think that was the, um, the high level of Epica getting through it and becoming big? I mean, not every band can um, can get out of the music business as you did? I think a big step for Epica was to uh, change labels to Nuclear Blast Records, which is a big the biggest label nowadays for metal music. And um, then you start being part of the big promotion and marketing machine that they have. Um, obviously, there's been some uh, lineup changes as well, and that. Uh, I guess uh, made the band maybe stronger or like more with people who really want to go for it or still want to go for it and uh, as I said you know it's a constant uh, there's always work to do with a band and you, there's not a day without emails or mm. uh, phone calls or yeah uh, designing some stuff or thinking about new merch or whatnot you know new songs can be anything there's, every day you're busy with the band and uh, um, and you have to do it like that if you want to keep growing and I think that of course next to making decent music if you don't have the music and people don't like it then you can forget about it but if you have that you know, work your asses off just to get it out there and go on tour and keep going on tour also maybe in smaller stages, you know, it doesn't matter as long as we have fun and um, so I guess that's all part of it and it's just keep going for it and because a lot of people uh, would ask like what can I do to to become famous or something and then I think, you know, just make good music and then work for it and like get out there um, and be honest to yourself if it's not good then just forget about it and do something which is better than, uh, like I said, there's lots of stuff in the garbage that was not good enough. It needs to be really, um, really great stuff. And then, if it's great for me, it might be shitty for you. So that's still another issue. But um, you, you try to do your best yourself and then see from there if people like it. Do you think that nowadays bands are able to deal with all this new market slow? Uh, yeah, but there's a lot of stuff going on, like if you see that, for instance, like Facebook, how big, that's a huge influence, of course, you used to have like the websites, and if people didn't go to your website, they wouldn't notice you, you're on tour, now you have, what is it, Bands in Town, which is an app on Facebook, and it spams all of you guys, and, and then you know that we're around, and then we put posts, uh, like geo-targeted posts, so only people in Italy would get it, or um, stuff like that. So, yeah, for, I, I think for new bands, it's you also have YouTube, you have so many things which you can use as, as bands, and that was different in the past, you know, of course you had more maybe television, uh, like uh, music channels, which are fading now because MTV is not a music channel anymore, it's more like, you know, what is it? Gordy Shore or something? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, or Cribs, that's not music, but um, um, oh, we have a visitor. Hi. I'm sorry, Kuhn. Uh, I'm trying to work here. Yeah, but well, you didn't say don't come in. <laughs> yeah, so you should join us. You can join, yeah. <laughs> Hello. So, what's your answer to the question? I would say maybe yes, but <laughs> since my current situation, I would say probably no. Mm. Yeah. Depends See. actually on how many people there, there are in the room. Mm. <laughs>
nice. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Uh, what was the question again? I don't know. <laughs> no, okay. I, I guess you answered. Okay. I guess you answered let's it. So, then. let's go to the next yeah, question. Sure. Um, in your shows, you've jammed with uh, Floyd Jensen from Nightwish and uh, Rebound. Uh, she was also in uh, in retrospect for yeah. the songs uh, "Starboard Mother," uh, "Do Rosa," and "Sacta Terra." Uh, have you ever thought about jamming with her uh, in a recording session? If, if we Have working you ever with told, yes, working with her in a recording session. In a recording session, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I haven't really thought about it, but who knows, maybe it'll happen. Um, we're good friends, we also have been on tour uh, with Revamp. And, um, so yeah, uh, why not? But it's the same like with the last album, we didn't really... Uh, uh, we didn't have any guests, I guess, to come... To, uh, yeah. We didn't think about, we didn't need like the voice she, she has to make enhance it or something, so we didn't really think about it, but it might happen. Is there anyone you would like to jam with? Uh, <laughs> to jam with? Um, Um, I would like to jam, if it would be possible, with uh, Dimebag Daryl from Pantera, but he's not around anymore, so that's not going to happen, but I would love uh, to have, to sit down with him and see what we can come up with. And what's next for Epica? What's your next, next project? Uh, well, we're going to finish first this European tour. We have two parts of it. Next year will be the second part. Um, we go to India and stuff like that, as I said before. Then we have South American tour part two. We have Russia, Scandinavia. We have uh, summer festivals next year. And then we go on a new European tour again. We're gonna do the US because that one got cancelled. Um, and then we're already 2000. 16, where we're probably gonna start recording an album again. Uh, so those are all the plans. You know, lots of touring now. Basically, we're touring until end of next year, probably. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and then we're gonna start with a new album. Is there any new soundtrack in your thoughts? Oh, I have been. Uh, writing some music but not a lot yet so it's still very fresh and if you're also on tour it's difficult to come up with new stuff there's too much noise as you have noticed um, so yeah I need to be at home and relax and then some stuff is coming yeah so. okay so thank you very much you're welcome <laughs> thanks for having me thank you cheers <laughs>